Welcome to the Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. Today we have an exciting new message on love by our devoted host and child of God, George Morales. Brethren, take particular note of this good news of great joy, which is brought unto you today. The scripture says that when all hopes are lost, the Savior appears. The only option for the inhabitants of the world now is to put this gospel into practice. Whosoever seeks after eternal life has to practice what this text read to you demands. The end of the world has come, and the time of foolishness has since passed. Love is eternal life. No matter your position in life, no matter how wealthy you may be, no matter what you may do, if you have no love, you are nothing. The first lesson says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou hast fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. The entire world has forsaken the path of love, and is engaged in things that bring perdition. Whoever wants eternal life has to love one another so that he will be rich or that he will be great and prominent in the society. Be it known to you that the love in itself is eternal life and once you have love, you have eternal life. Love, not knowledge, leads to eternal life. Remember the forbidden tree in the garden which Adam and Eve were told not to eat because it was the tree of good and evil. When Satan asked Eve why she did not eat of that fruit, she replied that God told them to eat of every other fruit excepting the one in the middle of the garden, which was the tree of good and evil. She also told Satan that God had warned that if they ate of it, they would die. Satan told Eve, that God did not want them to eat of the fruit so that their eyes would not be opened to be as wise as God. Because Eve wanted to be as wise as God, she ate of the forbidden fruit and gave also to her husband. The eyes of both of them were open, just as your eyes are open today. For this reason, when Adam and Eve heard the voice of God, they ran and hid themselves. When God called on Adam, he replied, saying, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. When God asked Adam who told him that he was naked and wondered whether he had eaten the forbidden fruit, Adam replied, saying, The woman whom thou givest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. You have heard of the saying that as the heavens are higher than the earth, so is the wisdom of God greater than the wisdom of man. Adam and Eve did not know that the tree of knowledge of good and evil was not all they needed. They did not know what was left, although they had eaten of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God knew that knowledge does not lead one unto eternal life. Since they had eaten of the tree of knowledge, God ordered them out of the garden so that they would not eat of the tree of life and have eternal life. From that time, no one has eternal life because no one has love. The moment you love one another, you will have eternal life. Christ is the tree of life. You should be thankful to our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the only embodiment of love. That was why he said, I am the bread of life. Whosoever eateth of my flesh and drinketh my blood shall have eternal life. Our Lord Jesus Christ is that tree of life. This knowledge has eluded all the inhabitants of the world. If Adam and Eve and Abraham and other prophets of old had that love, 
they would have had eternal life. The same love is lacking in the entire world today. The whites, the blacks, and indeed all the inhabitants of the world do not have eternal life because they possess not love. Man has made a lot of inventions and has manufactured various things but cannot have eternal life. This is so because there is no human being who has love. Love is that cornerstone which the builders have rejected. Satan himself knows that whosoever commits sin has no life in him. That is why he goes about sowing seeds of discord and placing stumbling blocks on the ways of the children of God, so that when they fall, eternal life will elude them. That is why God is advising us to love one another, brethren. You can see the wonderful love God has for mankind because he does not wish that we should perish. He has decided to deliver this gospel. The whole world is beset with problems right from the time of Adam till now. Man has forsaken the path of righteousness. On one hand, if a person is sick and does not realize that he is sick, how can he contact a physician? On the other hand, if a person is sick and does not know the kind of sickness, how will he get himself cured? You can see that the problems and afflictions in the world today are attributed to money, women, and other things, whereas the cause of the problems in the world is because they have forsaken God's love. That is why it has pleased God today to send his love into the world. Romans chapter 13, verse eight. Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Love connotes oneness and equality. Brethren, have you heard what is read to you? This injunction was handed down to mankind about 2,000 years ago but mankind has failed to put it into practice. It is on the basis of this that God has considered it wise to remind you all once again. God has to expedite upon the meaning of love one another. The meaning of it is that we have to love ourselves and live in harmony. It means that I should love you and you should love me. The other person should love us as we love him equally, and so on. It explains the concept of oneness that is prevalent in brotherhood, the love of one to another. It borders on mutual reciprocation. The concept of equality in brotherhood also is based on love one another. The kingdom of God you are told about is nothing besides love. It explains why you are dead if you have no love. That is why you hear that brotherhood is neither a church, nor a service center, nor a healing home, nor a school. Brotherhood of the cross and star is the kingdom of God where love is practiced. It is a place where there is no hatred, backbiting, division, killing, stealing, swindling, and other vices. It is the kingdom of God wherein dwells love. John chapter three, Verse 14, we know that we have passed from death unto life 
because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Brethren, have you heard the passage? There is the fear of death in going forward, but to go back is death itself. We have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. But those who refuse to love abide in death. That is the judgment. Love concludes the chapter of life. Go and tell the politicians, men and women, rich and poor, the governors, presidents, and men of all walks of life that they should abide in love. Tell them also that whosoever abides not in love is dead. Whatever is your name or position, if you do not abide in love, you have perished. But if you abide in love, you have eternal life. What do you gain if you have riches, beautiful wives, and wisdom, and all your heart's desires, but have no love? Alternatively, if somebody lacks all these things, but has love, he has eternal life and loses nothing. If you know that once you love one another, you have passed from death unto life, why would you not have love? When you know that whosoever abides not in love is dead, tell me why you should not love one another, brethren. Know that no other thing can help you, not even money, children, wife, husband, parents, or church denominations, except you love one another. If you abide not in love, you are already dead. God does not relent in his promise, but is long-suffering. God is only being patient with man to give him enough time to repent and be saved. It is not God's wish that any of us should perish, but that we should repent and have eternal life. The Holy Spirit is love. Our Lord Jesus Christ knows what we need and what is good for us. Love is that which is good for us. This explains why he left us with no other thing than love. He said, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another even as I have loved you. John 13, verse 34. Love is the prerequisite for the kingdom of God. Do not love simply because you want to be loved or for the sake of money or that you would be reciprocated in any way. The purpose of your love is for the Father to endow you with his spirit. It is the Lord's promise as quoted in John chapter 14, verse 15 and 16. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. The world takes delight in hatred. Why is it that somebody who claims to love God goes about victimizing or even killing others? When you scandalize and blackmail your fellow man, you are an enemy of God. Why should you claim to love God? yet you judge and condemn other people, churches and governments. The Protestant church broke away from the Catholic for the simple reason that God was not worshiped in the right way. The prudent question is, do the Protestants even know God? 
On their part, the Catholic members claim to be the only godly people and that the Protestants are ungodly. Does it mean that the Protestants are not God's people? Does God discriminate? The Muslims are not left out in these claims and counterclaims. They profess that the Christians are not God's people, and so they do not know God. Ask the Muslims whether they truly know God. Villages, towns, cities, and nations condemn each other. Who makes you a judge over any village, town, city, or nation? Are you sure your town or city is better than the other before God? Even within this fold of brotherhood, brothers and sisters condemn each other. You condemn another? Are you better? Why not emulate our Lord Jesus Christ? When God Almighty threatened to destroy the earth as a result of the sins of the world, our Lord Jesus Christ interceded. He volunteered to come and shed his precious blood for the atonement of the sins of the world. Who has ever demonstrated such marvelous love? Our Lord Jesus Christ does not condemn or kill anyone because he loves the Father with all his heart, with all his soul, and with all of his mind. With this immense love for his Father, he came and gave his life as a ransom for the salvation of mankind. And the Father, too, loves the entire world with all his heart, with all his soul, and with all his mind. This is clearly shown in the biblical excerpt. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. John chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. This is a display of ultimate love. So, the most important commandment is that anyone who loves God must also love his brethren. Anyone who loves God must love all human beings and all things created by God. Love is the fulfillment of the law. Therefore, if you love a human being, it means you have also loved God. If you love God, you have also loved man. The two concepts of love of God and love of your fellow man go hand in hand, and the two are one. That is why we are told that though you may give all that you have and give your flesh as a burnt offering, if you have no love, it profits you nothing. If you love God with all your soul, mind, and heart, you will not claim to be a native of any particular part of the world. You will not discriminate or oppress others. This is an advice, not a vision or prophecy, dream. It is the word of God. This word will be worked out as geometry and algebra. And it is the first and foremost assignment for humanity. That is, mankind has to love the Lord God Almighty with all his heart, mind, and soul. This is the most important thing in your life. The moment you are able to do this, then you have found the solution to this geometry and algebra problem. This is why our Lord Jesus Christ said, through John, that you should neither love the world nor the things in the world. For anyone who loves the world and the fullness thereof does not have the love of God in him. From now on, use your mind soul and heart to love God. This is the first commandment. If you do not love God wholeheartedly, how can you love your brethren? Every person should search himself to see whether he loves God with all his life, soul, mind, and heart. To love God in this manner means that you should surrender all your life, wealth, and self to the service of God then you have to love others as God loves you. You are a liar if you call yourself a Christian, yet you do not practice the teachings of Christ on love. Let this sermon get to both Christian and Muslim world, as well as to other religions. 
The entire people of the world know that to be a child of God, one must be identified with the virtues of God. You are therefore easily spotted out as a liar when you make false claims. That is why the entire humanity keep on waiting for the revelation of the children of God. Anyone with that love, which is the identity card, is not hidden, but shines like a star. To raise the dead and heal the sick will not identify you as God's children. To quote Bible verse from Genesis to Revelation does not identify you as the true children of God. You may be gifted to tell visions and prophecy, starting from the pre era to date, yet this cannot give you the identity of a child of God. That is why it is recorded in the scripture, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a twinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 1 to 2. If you do not have love as your identity card, then you are wasting your time. You may distribute money to people, yet if you do not have love, it will be of no use to you. Why do you give money to a particular person, but yet you forget about the others? When you give money to someone, it is not an indication that you love the one. So love is the only identity card into the kingdom of God and of the children of God. When we sing that a mark has been made on those who have not sinned, what is this mark? It is nothing but love. John chapter 13, verse 35. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. It is said, you should love your enemies and pray for those who despitefully use you and persecute you, so that you may resemble your heavenly Father. For he causes the rain to fall on both the good and the evil, and he makes the sun to shine on the just and unjust. This is the tenant of the kingdom of God. If we should love everybody, then the people of the world would really know that we are true children of the Most High God. That is the only identification mark you should have. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, He who is not with him is against, and he who does not gather with him scatters abroad. He loves everybody equally, and as such we should love one another. He has no distinction between the blacks and the whites, and the Indians, or any other race. Christ has the same regard for all. Therefore do not judge others. Whether the person is baptized or not, we are one in the Lord. The love of the Holy Spirit is equal to every soul. We are those led by the Holy Spirit. If the Spirit of Christ is in you, you are equally Christ and his disciples. 
You are charged to love all members of different church denominations. You should practice this love at all times and in all places. You should also spread this gospel of love to all the nooks and crannies of the earth. We are all one. Do not discriminate. Love everybody as Christ loves you. Those regarded as thieves and robbers are not thieves and robbers, but hungry people. Many people who take to committing certain crimes are driven into such crimes because of hunger and starvation and frustration. Some women take to prostitution because of hopelessness. Some commit abortions out of frustration. So it is your duty to help them, irrespective of their misdeeds. In doing this, you should know that you are not the very one doing it, but God himself. The formula could be compared to that of solving a simple mathematical problem in algebra. If you love God, you will love one another. And if you love one another, you will love God. And you will also be a disciple of Christ. This is exactly what the Father wants you to stamp in your memory. This is my message to you. Love ye one another. My dear brethren, the shortest cut into God's kingdom is love. God bless you. And thank you for listening. You're the lamb that was slain on the cross.